Okay, guys, welcome then to topic seven, where we are continuing on with your linear programming. Okay, so what we're going to do here is pull together, um, apply your knowledge three. Okay, if you want to have a go at doing this separately, following on from apply your knowledge two, then absolutely have a go at it and then follow the recording just to see where you went right and where you went wrong, okay? But if you feel as though you need me to explain it again, then please do listen in here and we'll go through it together. I'm gonna go quicker pace though than in apply your knowledge two because we really did go through it there to the nth degree. So we're gonna try a quicker pace for apply your knowledge three, um, because hopefully a lot of this now is starting to sink in for linear programming. So we need to determine the optimal production plan and also the maximum contribution. So in other words, you need to go all the way through your DOF pies in order that you can identify what the product mix will be and also how much contribution can be earned. So the company makes two products, the X and the Y, which is great. So in defining the variables, it's nice and straightforward because we're already called X and Y. We've got X generating a contribution of 10 and Y making 12. So this is your contribution per unit, which will be used when you are defining your objective in O of your DOF pies. So the required input then for each unit Every single product X takes three meters of wood and 45 minutes of labor, and every Y takes four minutes of wood and 30 minutes of labor. We've got 210 hours available, so labor has got 210 hours, and in terms of your wood, you've got 1200 meters available. Now just notice that your labor is in minutes here and hours here. You can work either in minutes or hours as long as you're consistent. So you need to either convert to hours here or to minutes here. It's up to you. You've then got some costs. These are irrelevant for this question, but we're going to use those when we move on to apply your knowledge for. Okay, so not relevant for this particular question at this point in time. Let's have a look then at how we go about answering this question. Remembering then to use DOF pies to help you along and starting with defining the variables. So when we define the variables, for this particular one we've already got products named X and Y but for good practice I'm writing it down as a reminder. So X in my calculations will represent the number of product X and Y will represent the number of product Y. Step two then, we need to state our objective function. So what is it that we're trying to achieve? Well, we're trying to achieve maximization of contribution and we are told that we've got contribution of 10 for X and 12 for Y. Therefore, maximum contribution is going to be 10X plus 12Y. We can now move on to formulate our constraints. And here, all we're going to do is take the information from the question and put it into a sum. Now, it's already pretty much there. Our word is 3 for every x, 4 for every y, and we've got 1,200 in total. So, wood is our first constraint. 3x plus 4y has got to be less than or equal to 1,200 metres. And then we've got labour, and our labour is 45 minutes, 30 minutes, and 210 hours. So here I'm just going to convert them to hours. So 45 over 60 is 3 quarters of an hour, 0 0.75, and 30 over 60 is 0 0.5, it's half an hour. Okay, 
And as I say, you could, if you wanted, just convert your hours up. So therefore multiply it by 60 minutes to give you the number of minutes. But I'm going to stick with hours. So we've got 0.75x adds 0.5y must be less than or equal to 210 hours. The fact that we've got key meters here and, key and hours here doesn't matter. OK, we don't have to deal with the same metrics in terms of our constraints. We just have to make sure the constraints themselves are the same metrics. Now, you will notice that we have not been given any minimum or maximum demand. So what we also need to state then is our non-negativity, which means for both X and Y, we need to make either nothing or more than zero. We can't make a negative. So that's your constraints formulated. So look at that, guys. It soon starts to become easier, doesn't it, as we go through. We've completed DOF, DOF, define the variables, state your objective function, and formulate your constraints. We now need to move on to create our points to plot. So we need to be able to identify our coordinates. So we simply take down each constraint at a time, starting with wood, which was 3x plus 4y is equal to or less than 1200. Just going to put another page in. And then what we say is if we make nothing of x, so when x equals 0, 4y is 1200, therefore y must equal 300. So in terms of a coordinate, you've got 0 and 300. Remembering these are your x coordinates and these are your y coordinates. Your next constraint then is your labour. And your labour constraint was 0.75x and 0.50y equal to or less than 210 hours. Therefore, when x is 0, 0.5y is 210 hours. Therefore, y must equal 420. And if we flip that round, oh, which I forgot to do here, I apologise, back to wood, guys. When y equals 0, then 3x is 1,200. I bet you were shouting at the computer then. Kate, you've forgotten what to do. OK, I do apologise. Just whizzing away, that's my problem. OK, so we've got our x value now as well for wood. Sorry about that. So labour, when x equals 0, y is 0.5, therefore y is 420. And when y equals 0, we have 0.75x equals 210. Therefore, x equals 280. So we have our y coordinate of 420 and our x coordinate of 280. And that's it. We've only got two constraints for this particular question. So we can now draw our graph. Remembering it will be the largest of x and the largest of y, which denotes how big your graph is. So 420 of y and 400 of x. So if I go up to 100, 200, 300, 400. And then across here, again, if we go 100, 200, 300, and 400. Okay, our first line then is our wood. And our wood was 300 for Y. And our x coordinate was 400. So bringing that down. And then for labour, we've got 420 of y. I'll just take that up to 500. Oh, 
420 of y and 280 of x. We'll move that down here. So that's our labour and that's our wood. And then we can identify our feasible region. So your feasible region is the area within all of your intersects. So you just follow the lines round and turn every time they cross. And we've got point A, point B, point C, and finally point D. So you need to label up your feasible region. And then you need to find the optimal solution. So what you need to do now is create your ISO contribution line. So back to your page, and we are now in I of DOF Pies, which is your ISO contribution line. So you take the objective function that you've already calculated, which was 10x plus 12y, and you assume a contribution level. Okay, so let's say we have, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say we have a contribution level of, um, what can we say? If we say 2000, okay, I always like to try and pick a new, a new one every time I do it. So then we say, okay, when x equals zero, then 12y must be 2000, therefore y is going to be 2000 divided by 12, 167, and flip it around, when y equals zero, then 10x must equal 2000, so x must equal 2000 divided by 10, 200, so now we have got our coordinates of 167 for y and 200 for x. So popping those onto your graph. So we've got 167, which is about here, and then 200, which is there. Putting that on and obviously label it, ISO contribution line. And then, remember, you take your ruler or your piece of paper and you push it out across the angle of your ISO contribution line. And whichever intersect you pass through last, if your line is within your feasible region, is your optimal solution. However, if your line's up here, it will be the first intersect that you pass through. Okay, mine's within the feasible region, so it's the last intersect I pass through, which is point C. Therefore, point C is my optimal solution. And again, just having a look on the graph, roughly speaking, we're at around, say, 180 for Y, and around here, say, 150, 160 for X. Okay, that's your optimal solution. However, what we now need to do is prove that exact coordinate by completing our final stage of DOF pies, which is your simultaneous equation. And so we take the intersects that have created the optimal solution, but there was only two in this case anyway. So we take the constraints for both wood and labor down. And what we can see then is we've got 3x plus 4y is 1200, and 0.75 and 0.5 equals 210. Now remember your simultaneous equation has got the aim of either getting a zero for your x value or a zero for your y value. At this point in time, if I deduct one from the other, I do not end up with a zero value. What's that 990, isn't it? 
Okay, so we can't do that, so we need to multiply our lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply wood by one and labour by four. And that will give me 3x plus 4y is 1200. I haven't changed the top line for wood, but my labour line has now changed to 3x plus 2y equals 840. And note that we multiply across the whole line. So I'll just put another page in, guys. So now, if we deduct one from the other, we end up with a value of 0x plus 2y equals 360. So now we can use those values to find out that, well, if x equals 0, then 2y equals 360. Therefore, y equals 180, so that's our y value. And now, if we take our original constraint for wood of 3x plus 4y, which we now know is 180, we get 1200. So if we say 3x plus 720, which is that value, equals 1,200 still, we know that 3x must equal 480 because that's the difference between 1,200 and 720. Therefore, the value of x must equal 160. So y is 180, x is 160. You now need to answer the question, what is your optimal production plan and what is the maximum contribution? We've proved the coordinates being 180 and 160 according to our graph, which is about what we said. Therefore, your optimal product mix is going to be 180 of y and 160 of x. And how much contribution can be earned? Well, you take your objective function from step O in DOF pies, which is 10x plus 12y. So we say 10x plus 12y is maximum contribution. We now know the value of x is 160 and the value of y is 180. So when you multiply those through and add them up, we end up with a value of 3,760, which is the maximum contribution that can be earned given the constraints that we've got. And that, guys, is apply your knowledge. Number three, completely answered. What you now need to do is move on to the next recording where we look at slack and shadow pricing and then you are going to use the answer from this question to help you in terms of calculating your shadow and slack prices. Okay, so well done and thank you for listening.